share with them this beautiful religion. Now that's like you you feel like if they don't accept this, they'll go to hell. Yeah, the that's, same thing. Yes, of okay. course we believe in that because there's the only salvation. I was not allowed to read the Quran because you know in the 60s, you know, Muslim don't give you Quran. You see, you are not a Muslim. Uh, you cannot hold the Quran. You cannot read the Quran. So I would say, please read the book of Allah. Islam is not Muslim. Muslim is the people. Islam is the teacher. The socialist parties used to come to our high school, I'd always be arguing with them. When I'd ultimately argue with them, I always found the topic of argument returning to religion. And I'd speak to them and they'd say, we believe that religion is the opiate of the people. This is what Karl Marx said in his book, The Communist Manifesto. It's something which numbs the people. So I felt an amazing sense of attachment to my belief. But ultimately, in my heart, I thought, I really don't know that much about my belief. Now, I studied at least enough to know the Ten Commandments. The second of which is you should not make pictures, you should not make images of your Lord. Yet in the, in the Sistine Chapel within the Vatican, we see a picture of God. And all he is is an old man with a long grey beard. Is this who you're worshipping? And all of my uh, family, some of who claimed to be, you know, religious practicing Christians, they said to me, why are you growing your beard? Why won't you eat pork? Why won't you drink alcohol? And I'd say, well, the Bible says so. And they'd say to me, well, no, no, that's in the Old Testament. We follow the New Testament. And one time I remember he actually gave me a book. It was a very big book. I can't remember what it was, but for all I knew, it was the Quran. And I used to keep it in my room, even though I'd never read it. And one day my brother actually found it and he said, what's this? It must be the Quran. So he took it outside and him and his friends, they burnt it, a'udhu billah. So even though I knew nothing about it, you'd understand I wouldn't want to join this religion. Because look at how much the people hate it. Who'd want to join something like that? So therefore your family will turn against you. Therefore your friends will turn against you. So I thought, man, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do my research and I'm going to find out about his religion and I'm going to attack him. So ultimately I wanted to look into Islam so that I could discredit it. The second thing I found out about Islam was that Muslims believe in one God and they did not compromise on that. They believed in Tawheed and they would not budge. They didn't say any of the prophets were part of God. They did not say that God could become a man. They did not say any such thing and every single religion you will see makes this type of... He never said anything to us about, hey, are you Muslims or why aren't you Muslims or yeah. you should be doing this. His dawah or his preaching was in his behavior. But in the process of observing these Muslim brothers, I became increasingly impressed with their behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were living a very moral and ethical life. I got around to asking myself the sort of the fundamental question, which is what separates these Muslim friends of mine from me in terms of belief? I took down two different translations of the meaning of the Quran. And mm -hmm. I had acquired back in those courses, read them, and the more I read, the more I said, no, wait a minute, you know, this, this is what I believe. I saw within the Quran statements about these things that I knew could not have been known by any illiterate seventh century Arab. Uh, and so that left me with, with the conclusion, you know, this had to be inspired. Uh, quite honestly, brother, I was uncomfortable with that conclusion. And a few seconds later, my wife turned to me and said, uh, how did you fill out the question on religious affiliation? And I said, well, Christian, <laughs> of course. You know, by January of 1993, I was now reading my third different English translation of the meaning mm -hmm. of the Quran. You know, because again, I wasn't going to trust these first two. You know, I, I didn't like that conclusion I had come to, yeah. that Muhammad, peace be upon him, had been inspired by me. And so Sister Iman came, and she brought me my order, and she glanced down and said, Oh, I see you're reading the Quran. Are you a Muslim? And the word was out of my mouth before it could be modified by any social etiquette whatsoever. I said, No! <laughs> to myself, my goodness, what is going on with me? I went, I laughed, I had fun. Yes, I got drunk and, you know, I danced, but I just feel like so empty. What's, what's, what did I do? I mean, I don't feel happy. Yeah. Everyone's laughing, like, the, you know, it's so fake because you're there and you're, you know, you, you pretend you're having a good time. But I would go home and I would literally be like, like, what? I, I don't know, like, can I see myself like this in five years, ten years? What am I really doing? 
and I was looking through some Bible verses around the internet, and I, I just researched the Ten Commandments, which we all learned before and memorized in school. But in, in you know, and I read the first commandment, you know, I am your Lord thy God, thou shalt not have any gods except me, you know, in heaven, earth, in between, right? I mean, we all know that, you know, all the Christians know that. And at that time, it just, it was, it was different. It, it sounded different. Janet and I said, but miss, uh, we don't really, you know, I mean, the Trinity and the whole issue of, you know, worshiping Jesus, it, it kind of goes against, uh, you know, the principles of, of, you know, what the, you know, the Bible supposedly teaches. And she says, yeah, you know what, <laughs> you're right, but, you know, this is just something we believe. And I remember it in myself I said you know I can't believe this and uh, I just said you know what I I believe in God all religions are equally evil <laughs> or whatever they just cause wars and I just believe in God and and you know I'll just live my life like that I'll have my own religion where I you know I'm okay with everyone as long as they call upon God and I can I have no problem with praying with all that. you know I he taught me how to pray he gave me you know Surah Fatiha and I remember I was uh, you know my car broke down at that time for some time and I was going on the bus and every time I'd be on the bus I was reading through it I was like I would never remember these words you know like what is Alhamdulillah you know I'm not gonna remember this you know what is Arabic I mean why does it have to be Arabic I'll put it in my pocket and amazingly it would start going in my mind you know Alhamdulillah you know I was like whoa and he didn't see me for a long time and he comes and looks at me and he's like, Wow, how are you, you know? Did you become Muslim? And a slip of a tongue, I say, yeah. I said, no. <laughs> there is a way out there and it's not my way. I can't just pick my own way and say, you know what? Forget with this, forget with that. I have my own way. There is a way out there and God wants me to find it. If you're sincere and you ask for it, get down there on, on your knees. Put your head on the ground. If you're Christian, you're not going to have a problem with it because, you know, Jesus did it, Abraham did it, uh, and other prophets did it. Put your head on the ground and ask, you know, don't ask in anyone else's name, okay? This will not be something that will go against, uh, you know, your belief either. Just ask the one true creator. Just say, oh my, oh my Lord, creator of the heavens and the earth, right? Use, you know, all oh, the most gracious, the most merciful, the creator. Show me the truth. And the final day And the holy scriptures To believe in destiny That good and bad both come from him And the resurrection There is no God but Allah